Virgo, welcome to your March 2020 general tarot reading. It's Raina here. So I'm going to, I had pretty good luck with another sign just going like this, just to make sure that I, you know, pick different cards. See, I'm getting some of the cards I don't normally get. So. <laughs> Holy moly. How many major iconic cards do you have? There's three out of six? Well, you're having a full moon in your sign, Virgo. And this is happening on the day that Mercury goes direct, which is March 9th. Now, the interesting thing about this is that Mercury's going direct in your sixth house. But it began the retrograde in your seventh house, which is um, a relationship house. So, um, unless it has some kind of a legal connotation or um, a partnership, like a legal partnership, I don't know. But there could be some resolution that, that comes about. But you're also having your f full moon in your sign. So, um, certain awareness about your own needs in a relationship or just um, deciding to let go of certain tendencies that you have in your makeup. Okay. Um, the heart of the matter is the High Priestess. And this is a card that's associated with... Um, you know, being in touch with your higher self and sometimes also kind of be still and know that kind of attitude of like, I can't, it's like a passive kind of a card. And even the, the hangman is a similar vein where you may feel like you have to um, go to a higher authority in terms of whatever your concerns are that maybe you're trying to make something happen and it just isn't going to cut it to um, do it the way that you've always done it. You have to have a spiritual attitude. And, you know, it's interesting that we have the card that kind of informs this is the Devil card. This card connects to the sign of Capricorn, which is a fellow Earth sign. And, um, so, I mean, that could be a person in your life, but it's almost like um, if this is a personal relationship, it's like you may be trying to get away from this influence, which can be very negative and can be like a uh, maybe it's like an affair or something like you're filled with lust for this person and you can't get them out of your your. Um, mind or or what have you uh, get it out of your system and you feel like this sense of like bondage to this individual and the also with a um, like a, a work related matter this can be being being tempted by the money for something, either a job that you have or even something that you want because of that sense of like, um, you know, wanting, you know, it could be like greed, but I don't like to just make it out like that. I feel like sometimes people want money because of simply feeling more safe or, or something like that. It's not necessarily that they're greedy. But something is like pulling at you in that sense. And when we look at the higher message, it's the five of pentacles, which relates to lack consciousness. So just like what I was saying is that that sense of insecurity and, and wanting to feel uh, better about it by the monetary angle or if it is an affair or some some kind of like 
fling that is not really a true relationship, but it's kind of like just um, a physical relationship, and perhaps you would like it to be something more, but it is what it is. The Five of Pentacles, maybe, I mean, there might be a part of you that feels like this situation is dragging you down, but you can't... Um, the, the alternative would feel even worse for you because, you know, it's like saying, but if I break up with this person, then I won't have anybody, as if that would be such a horrible thing. So that kind of, I think I just did your, your astrology for March today, and I was saying something similar about being alone versus being with somebody else. It's kind of interesting. Um, so... It's like maybe tolerating a relationship that is not really serving you. And why, you know, what is the ultimate reason why that is? What crosses you is the Ace of Wands. And this is a card of, um, you know, independent new beginnings and things like this. I always think of the spring when I see this card. But it's in the challenge position. So it's like... I think it's a process. I think that if something comes, um, manifests uh, to you around the 9th of March in the way of a realization about yourself, an ending of some sort of a relationship, you may be beginning that process. But now, until that time, until you can let go of whatever the devil represents, that m might be kind of, um, you know, blocked, the, the new beginning in your life. But it doesn't mean that it's permanent, obviously. It means that maybe you have some things that you have to take care of in order to make it happen. What's coming in is represented by the hangman. And this is kind of like letting go and letting God um, a sacrifice. Um, but actually, I think it's more like um, be, becoming passive, um, letting yourself, um, surrendering to the situation, not giving up, but just letting go of the need to control what's going to happen. So... Um, in some cases, it can be like giving, maybe you're even giving yourself a break and saying, you know, I'm having a hard time, even if like this is an addiction, because the devil could be an addiction, you know, even if it's something like an addiction and the high priestess is searching for meaning, to, you know, to be able to transcend cravings or an addiction could be to a person, though, come to think of it. And you know, wanting to start a new life, but feeling those feelings, you know, in order to heal, sometimes you have to um, allow yourself to just accept where you're at. And some people, like, when they know that they're unhappy in a certain place because they're doing things that they don't want to do they just start beating themselves up and they think that they have to solve all their problems overnight and no the awareness of it is everything it's really um, a big a big part of the solution but it doesn't mean that everything is just going to um, happen overnight so the hangman is really about that interim period where you may feel like you're in between two worlds. You may feel like, you know, um, you're waiting for that ace of wands, that kind of new beginning, that springtime in your soul. And, um, and yet you may feel like you're in the womb almost, like you're ready to be birthed. Um, but it's not quite there yet. And if this is like a romantic situation... Um, uh, we have as the outcome card 
the Ten of Cups, which is a really positive card and really speaks to, you know, marriage, you know, commitment. So this is the scenario that I am putting forth if this is a relationship issue. Is it that you are in, you know, you're um, going to choose your marriage if you're having an affair or choose to get married if you haven't gotten married yet but you're kind of not sure if you wanted to commit to somebody and maybe you had this little secret person that you were still dealing with and you felt guilty because you were supposed to be getting married I think that you're going to um, put that person first and you know something even if it's an affair whatever is going on in your life understand that um, as long as you are aware of exactly you know what you're you're doing and you're not making excuses for it then to me you're being intentional and conscious and that is um, a big improvement over a lot of people who are you know kind of doing things very unconsciously and sometimes we don't do everything the way that we should or the way that we think we should but there's always a chance to kind of rectify the situation and so the high priestess to me is about seeking the highest authority and the highest wisdom and kind of like your higher nature and choosing that over the devil okay and so anyway I or, or you know the lower nature the carnal nature so anyway Virgo I hope that um, <laughs> some of it related to your life if you'd like a private reading um, especially if you're interested in astrological reading because that's my main thing uh, please check me out at rainandmoonastrology.com. The link is below. Take care. Bye.